Hello, this is Dampro. Welcome back to my train rigging tutorial. Um, we're in part two. In the last tutorial, we actually went through and we started automating some of these uh, wheels. So that's where we left off. We have these main three sets of wheels rotating in the same way. But now we're uh, left with a little bit of a problem. That when we rotate our large wheel like this, we need to rotate the smaller wheel in the front and the smaller wheels, even yet smaller wheels in the back, um, at a different rate so we can travel the same distance so it's going to look uh, right so uh, again the main um, thing we're trying to accomplish here is so our animator only needs to rotate one single wheel and everything else is going to uh, rotate appropriately and to do that we need to figure out the circumference of our large wheel and the circumference of our smaller wheel so that's actually pretty easy um, normally what I would do for a tire is just select the mesh itself and use the dimensions directly that would tell me um, this dimension of uh, point uh, 1.451 would be um, the diameter of my wheel and I could figure out my circumference after knowing that um, but with a train wheel let me tab into edit mode of that mesh um, that dimension is actually skewed a little bit and then it's because of this inner ring which is larger um, than the outer part of this wheel so the outer part of the wheel that's what's actually in contact with the track and uh, that dimension is skewed because of this inner lip so what we need to do is figure out the dimension of this uh, outer part so we can do that very simply by selecting that loop doing shift D to duplicate that ring I'm going to do GX to drag this out a little bit then P I'm going to separate that loop by selection just so I can make a whole separate object here now, I've actually done this for these other wheels just so you don't have to watch me do that again let me just delete this one that I just made and I have these other uh, loops that were created from that outer loop from these other wheels now I can use this dimension you you can see the difference here it's 1.402 versus um, the dimension of this wheel which is showing the largest part of that uh, uh, lip on the inside there which is 1.451 now we need to do a little bit of math here but don't worry I've actually done most of that hard work uh, beforehand and just to uh, speed things up now that we have our dimensions um, for each one of these wheels what we need to do is figure out our circumference so like I mentioned before the dimension is going to be our diameter so I'm actually using um, uh, blender units but you could change this to metric I just want to to see that um, when we're figuring this stuff out we can just use metric and it's the same if we switch this back to um, our uh, blender units it's the same so uh, just figure this out as metric so we have a our main wheel which has a diameter of 1.402 meters we just need to divide that uh, by 2 to give us our radius if you know the radius is the center of our circle to the outer part next I just googled uh, a circumference calculator so I could uh, punch in 0 0.702 uh, meters for my radius and that kicked out a number of 4.4108 um, meters for my circumference so I know this larger wheel has a circumference of 4.4108 um, next I just repeated that using my diameter for these other wheels figured out my radius punched that into my uh, circumference calculator to find out the circumference of those wheels now uh, to figure out the ratio that we need to spin these other smaller wheels to keep up and travel the same distance as this that's actually a really simple uh, operation all we need to do is um, divide our larger wheel by the circumference of the smaller wheels here and that will give us our ratio uh, so for the front wheel that ratio is one point um, 7227 so that means that every time we rotate uh, this wheel once this wheel needs to rotate 1.7227 times now same thing with our back wheel uh, we know our circumference we just divide that by the uh, divide our larger wheel by the circumference of the smaller one and this uh, back wheel gives us a ratio of 2.1145 now an, probably an easier way to think about this is just to um, uh, Whoops. let me select all these bones here and make sure everything's cleared out so our drive wheel if we rotate it one degree and I'll just punch in one degree in our X rotation we need to um, rotate our front wheel 1.7227 degrees and we need to rotate our back wheel 2.1145 degrees so this is actually pretty easy to do with a driver so what we're going to do 
I'm just going to leave this set up at rotated one degree. So I'm going to select this front wheel. I'm going to click on my X rotation um, transform for that wheel and click uh, add drivers. I will just do manually create waiter uh, from a single. Uh, <laughs> I know Blender 2.78 added a bunch of new stuff in here, and I think it actually made it a little bit more confusing. So, uh, when you add the driver, let me just do delete driver. So, uh, there's a lot more um, things here to pick from. Just pick this last one here, which is m manually create a single one. So, that added a driver to that value. Now, we need to um, set up that driver. And based on our math, I'm just going to add a new layout here by. Uh, putting the plus sign from this default layout. I'll call this drivers. This will allow us to go back from our driver layout to our default layout without having to open and shut a bunch of windows here. So I'm going to split this window. I'll leave this side a 3D view. I'm going to type T to get rid of that. Give me a little bit more real estate, but I still want to see this stuff. Next I'm going to take this side, go to a graph editor, and I want to change my F curve to a drivers layout and either clicking this plus or just typing N, I can get my uh, end panel out here. I just want to select my X uh, Euler rotation, which is this for the wheel that I have selected over here. And that is going to show uh, uh, my drivers. All right, now they've uh, 2.78 also uh, made all this to put this stuff in tabs. So the tab that we want is the drivers. So we're going to use a scripted expression, but before we do that, we need to set up a variable. And our variable is very easy. All we need to do, uh, our variable is just going to be uh, equal to whatever the rotation of our drive wheel is. So if I select this, I just want it to be exactly equal to that. Let me select that bone that has that driver again. Get it back over here. So we need to pick that so we'll just type rig and then pick train rig. So we need to find that bone, our drive wheel. And we need its X rotation. So we'll pick that and its local space. Let's just do update here. So you can see our value is one degree here. We have this one rotated one degree. So now we have a variable that's equal to this. Now all we need to do is use a very simple scripted expression. So it's going to be var, so because we want that rotation to be equal to that, times our ratio. So we want this to spin um, so it's equal to this, but times 1.7227 and we can update our dependencies, and let's take a look at what our rotation value of our front wheel is being now, is 1.723. So it just rounded it up a little bit but that's exactly what we want. Now we can actually uh, just copy this driver now that we have this set up, save a little setup time for our back one. I'm going to select this back one and paste this driver into the X rotation of um, of this. So paste our driver. Now let's select, make sure that bone is selected so we can get our rotation for that backbone. We just need to change uh, this value to our um, other ratio, which is for the back wheel which is 2.1145. We'll update that dependency, and you can see the X rotation for this one is now 2.114, so rounded that up again, or rounded it again. So every time we rotate this one degree, this is going to rotate 1.723 degrees, and it's just going to uh, uh, rotate the back one 2.114 degrees. We'll just take a look at this. Let's go back to uh, out of, get out of driver setup here and go back to default just to get more real estate here. We rotate this around. That is going to rotate those other wheels in the correct uh, at the correct ratio. So we're um, traveling the same distance. So um, we don't have to add a driver to these other bones. Rather, we can actually just copy this one. Uh, the rotation of this bone to these other back ones. So kind of the same thing we did with this when we rotate it, we're just copying the ones that are the same size um, from that. We can just uh, do the same thing here. Let me clear out all my stuff here, make sure everything's cleared. Alright, so I'm going to select this as my target. Shift select this one as the one that's going to be, I have the copy rotation constraint added to. And again, Control Shift C. This is our add constraints with targets. We can do copy rotation. Let's get to our um, bone constraints panel here. 
and we need to change this to local and local and now we're set now when we rotate this we've got those two wheels um, reset now I want to show you one more trick uh, again I'm going to use the copy uh, rotation or the copy attributes um, um, add-on I've shown this in other tutorials um, the copy attributes actually come standard with Blender you just need to go to user preferences and add-ons look for copy attributes and then you can enable it and you'll be able to do this which is going to save when you're copying uh, a rotation constraint and you don't want to go in there and manually set up a bunch of stuff um, these two bones are going to have the same exact constraint with the same exact configuration so we can actually copy that with our copy attributes uh, add-on by selecting these two bones shift selecting uh, this one that has that copy rotation on that's the active one I can do control C it gives us a copy attributes menu and we want to pick um, copy selected constraints and the constraint we want to copy is that copy rotation and now I can copy that to those other two bones with one click so save us some time from having to change anything here let's take a look at all of this everything is working and spinning correctly let me just get back to my uh, graph editor my dupe sheet I want to actually make um, an animation for this wheel to rotate around and that's basically I just want to line it up with the uh, uh, rig that's already in here uh, the one that train boy uh, one created and I can do that let's go to action editor I'm going to add a new action call it drive wheel and I just want to key this uh, bone right here I'm gonna add a keyframe to the X rotation at zero here so uh, insert single keyframe I'm going to go 30 frames later and rotate this around 360 degrees add a keyframe insert single keyframe and now I have an animation that's going to work I actually want to select those keys though and change them from Bezier which is the standard to uh, linear and that is going to match um, the animation on uh, Trainboy 1's rig so remember we're just disconnecting things and uh, re-rigging everything here to uh, uh, to follow along and do the same thing basically so now that I have that uh, something I want you to notice is if uh, sometimes um, these bones that have the drivers on them are going to lag behind especially when we start skipping around in the um, you'll notice that they're not rotating right all the time when you're skipping back and forth there's something that you can do very easily to turn on it's actually a hack um, the dependency graph is actually being worked on right now so it's being updated but I don't think those um, updates are live we can actually uh, go to our object data panel so we have our armature selected come down to relationship uh, relations extras and just click extra object and extra data update and that is going to force um, that driver to update uh, faster when we're um, scrubbing through our timeline so that should um, eliminate that lag behind um, one thing that it won't fix though is if we do this in our 3d view you'll notice a little bit of a lag sometimes it won't reset you just need to double reset your transforms so let's see if I can get this to get screwy here alt R and you notice that this didn't update it didn't go back we just double that but you don't have that problem if um, you're scrubbing through your timeline and that's the important part because when you're uh, doing um, rendering your animations um, you won't have that lag so you won't have any problems so I just wanted to point that out now that we have everything um, spinning correctly and we can just scrub our timeline here and see everything all of our wheels going uh, the right way and they're rotating in the um, so they all travel the same distance let's add one more curveball here so what would be nice uh, these three wheels are basically going to be stationary and they're always going to point the same direction but on our front wheel it would be nice if we could turn this wheel somewhat so we can follow the tracks and you'll notice that we've got a um, this back part here um, for our car should be able to pivot and this one should be able to pivot independently so I've actually added two uh, or three bones rather two for the back and one for the front let's actually go to side view oh, maybe not 
let's go to um, edit mode and let's set up our parenting so I've just sent uh, put them at the center of the axles I'm going to parent this front one to our engine main bone with control P keep offset and I'm going to parent these two pivots for the back to our car main bone control P keep offset now I want to reparent our um, front wheel to that pivot point control P keep offset and I want to parent these two to this pivot point and these two to this pivot point now let's go back to uh, run our animation here now I just want to um, this should only rotate around one axis we don't want to grab it and move that wheel so we're going to lock all of that we're gonna lock our scale and we need to figure out which axis is the correct axis around I think it is the Z the local Z axis let's turn it to XYZ Euler and lock everything but Z and now we have a way to pivot on um, that front wheel and the wheel uh, the wheel bone itself is still going to spin uh, correctly so pretty easy let's do the same for these we'll lock our location and our scale axes change this to only rotate around its Z and I've already changed it to XYZ Euler so there we go now we can spin this back part and the wheels are going to continue now we can also add this mesh to that bone let me just stop my animation go to frame one what I want to do is disconnect this from the old rig just like we did in our other tutorial where we disconnected the other stuff we're going to do alt P clear parent keep transformation we have unapplied transform so control A apply location rotation scale we always want to make sure that's zeroed out before we uh, parent to our um, new bones as I mentioned in our tutorial in part one so I'm going to select this mesh shift select our pivot bone here control P set parent to bone and select this one and parent this one to this control P set parent to bone now let's play our animation and see everything spinning and you'll see that now we've got this setup where we can rotate these two parts of our train in a logical way here and we can also rotate our train wheel in the front I don't expect us to, to do that very much but uh, uh, at least now we have the function uh, the functionality is in there to do that alright I'm actually getting close to 20 minutes already and I thought that we would get a little bit further um, I really want to get in here and do some of this fun stuff which is all the piston stuff and remember we're gonna build all that basically off of this single one uh, rotation of this bone all that stuff is going to work automatically for it and we're going to introduce a number of uh, constraints in the next one well probably one main one which is the IK constraint and I consider that the Swiss Army knife of constraints it's very useful and uh, it's also a special constraint that can do a lot of things that no other constraint can do and if you know anything about IK you can not use IK constraints with uh, object to object rigging you have to use an armature in order to uh, be able to do that so uh, rigging this train without an IK constraint it would be nearly impossible so next time we are going to start moving all this fun stuff in here and making that uh, all these pistons and things work so till next time good luck <laughs>